Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Jordan. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at uh, Alios Biopharma. We're part of the Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies of Johnson & Johnson. Um, I work in the biochemistry group, and I'm excited to tell you about some really cool data that I have today on the role of the priming loop in RNA synthesis and capping activities in RSV polymerase. Briefly, before I get into my research, I wanted to tell you briefly about uh, what our site is and how we fit into the greater company. Uh, so we started as a startup company back in 2009 with a staff of three people, and currently we're a staff of 125. Um, we were acquired by J&J &J in 2014, and from the beginning we've been focused on um, the discovery and development of antiviral drugs. Right here is a snapshot of some of the viral diseases that we address. We have uh, two main clinical programs uh, that operate out of the South San Francisco site. site. They're focused on respiratory viruses like RSV and influenza, and then the hepatitis programs, so hepatitis C and hepatitis B. We also are working on other more uh, exotic viruses uh, which have a global public health concern. What I'd like to talk to you about today is my work on the polymerase from respiratory syncytial virus. So respiratory syncytial virus has two main populations that it infects, and there's no current treatment, uh, effective treatment available. So pediatric populations, it's the most frequent cause of hospitalization of infants and young children in industrialized countries. Uh, Two-thirds of these infants are infected in the first year of their life, and there's approximately 130,000 to 170,000 hospitalizations. It's a significant health concern for infants. And then the elderly is another population that RSV infects. Uh, and it's underdiagnosed, and it can have serious health consequences, including death. One of our main, we have two main clinical trials going on, so stage two. And so there's a huge thrust within the company to understand RSV and its associated polymerase. Many of our stage two clinical trials are associated around a drug which targets the polymerase itself. So understanding the polymerase is very important for our group. I work in the biochemistry group, and so a lot of what we do is, is focused around the polymerase itself. Unfortunately, there's no structure of RSV polymerase, and so we operate off of a lot of homology models off of a well-characterized uh, well polymerase from VSV. That stands for vesicular stomatitis virus. VSV and RSV are both negative sense RNA viruses. They're composed of an L and a P subunit. The L pro protein stands for a large protein, and then its associated cofactor, which is a P protein. It's a phosphoprotein. What's interesting and, and pretty exciting about these, these enzymes, this is the L protein from VSV right here, is that they have many concerted uh, enzymatic functions all contained within this single subunit. So many things can happen, and, and what's I think presents a lot of opportunities for VSV and, and RSV is that a lot of them are very uncharacterized and not well understood based on how complicated they are to express. It's very difficult to get large quantities of highly pure protein. So as you can see here, as I've written, there are multiple enzymatic functions. Two that I'm going to talk about today in RSV are the RDRP activity, so standing for RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and then capping activities. What we noticed when, we were, when, we, when this cryo structure came out of VSV is that shown in pink here is, is a capping, uh, in coming out of the capping domain, protruding into the RDRP domain, is a priming loop. This priming loop has been identified in other polymerases as well, uh, so from HCV and influenza virus. And what they found in those two viruses is that, is that a deletion of this priming loop caused an increase in, in enzymatic activity. This led to our hypothesis that if we deleted this priming loop within RSV, it would also cause a, an increase in capping and RDRP activity. Using modeling, we built a, a homology model based on VSV and other related polymerases of the RSV polymerase, L protein, shown here. Like VSV, the RSV is, is, a, is a heterodimer can, uh, composed of an L protein and a P protein. What I'm showing here <coughs> are several structural motifs that I want to highlight. One of, one of them is a conserved HR residue, so it's a histidine-arginine motif that's very important for capping, as well as this priming loop that we found, once again, in the homology model, as well as the active site of the RDRP. You can see that how close all of the, these two active sites are to the priming loop. This led to the hypothesis, as I was saying, that deletion of this priming loop could be really important in understanding its enzymatic activity and that it could increase um, enzymatic activity for capping and RDRP overall. 
So we made, a, made two constructs. One was a wild type RSVLP polymerase. And then we made another protein which deleted the, the priming loop. Um, and we modeled this based off of uh, sequence alignments with VSV. What we found was completely unexpected. And that's shown here in this the sequencing gel. We took, uh, as shown here on the left hand side, is, is a no enzyme control. And then we compared that to a wild type RSVLP. We took a template strand derived from the RSV genome, and we added uh, radioactive GTP, ATP, and CTP, and then uh, incubated at us for a certain amount of time, and we watched uh, for the, the products to be base paired with the template strand. And what you see is a full extension using a de novo format, all the way up to the 11 mer. We also noticed that there was an initiation at both the plus one and the plus three site. This was con uh, um, consistent, one, which is which had been uh, observed in the literature in the past. Interestingly, though, the delta loop construct, that's the construct that we made that was missing the priming loop, it only made very small products. It wasn't able to fully extend, and it wasn't more active than what we thought, it, as what we had thought it would be uh, compared to HCV polymerase or influenza polymerase. What you see here is that um, compared to the wild type polymerase, the, the tumor, which is shown here, and particularly the nimer were much, much less than the wild type. And the total overall product is only 30% compared to the wild type RSVLP. So overall, the conclusion of, from this was that the removal of the priming loop reduces the full extension product. We used two RDRP activities uh, assays in the lab. We use one that's a de novo format, so there's no primer, and then we use one with a primer. What's shown here is the template strand that I had on the previous slide, but this time we have a primer added in, which base pairs with the first four nucleotides. We add uh, radioactive uh, G, A, and C again, and then look for the extension products, and then quantitate each band individually. The same kind of trend is observed, where the total extension product for the delta loop is much, much less than that for the wild type. And you can see here, uh, the evidence of this. So the, the full extension products are much less with that of the delta loop. So in a primer dependent format, deleting the priming loop impairs the transition from initiation to making a full length extension product. And this inability to synthesize the larger RNA products indicates very specifically that the priming loop is involved uh, in the processivity of the polymerase. So as I said, there are many enzymatic functions associated with the polymerase. Another one is the capping activity. Um, and what, what's important to note is that RSV polymerase is very, very difficult to produce in the lab. Um, it's hard to get large, pure quantities of it. And many researchers have struggled in the past to make enough highly pure material to do enzymatic assays. A significant struggle had been to, de to demonstrate capping. And so what I'm going to present to you today is the first demonstration of RSV capping activity that's been reported. What's shown here is two enzymatic steps uh, to do a functional assay in vitro. It takes uh, GTP, and in our case for enzymatic assays, we sometimes use radio-labeled GTP. A GTP ace can cleaves the first phosphate. Um, this is followed by a covalent intermediate with a PRNTase activity, that's the capping activity of the enzyme, and produce a capped RNA. The first thing that we did in order to, before we developed a full enzymatic assay, was to look at the mass spec readout of this, so to verify that we were getting the expected product. So um, these are the LCMS chromatograms. Um, one is the triphosphate standard, so the starting material that we put into this reaction, shown here, that forms a covalent intermediate use at that conserved histidine that I talked about earlier. The second one, for the second LCMS chromatogram, is the capped RNA standard. And we use this to verify and look for the same uh, mass to charge ratio in, via LCMS. And what we see over here for the sample that went through the enzymatic reaction was that we see almost complete conversion with no starting material um, indicating that, that we're forming a capped product. And this is the first evidence of this that's been reported. What you see here on the right is that homology model that I generated. And I said that, that there was a histidine motif that performed a covalent intermediate in that step. So we hypothesized first that by changing the, the histidine um, to an alanine, that this would serve as an important control to know that we were actually looking at capping. Because what had been reported in the literature um, often was that, that host uh, proteins found within our, the protein purification preps were often causing the signals that people observed. 
Um, and also what I want to point out here is that the, the conservation of this histidine arginine uh, set of residues with, between VSV, RSV, and other related RNA polymerases like Nipah virus, Ebola virus, perinfluenza virus, and uh, human metanumas virus. What you see here is under the no-enzyme control, we're monitoring the formation of the GPPPG um, product. And that's shown, it's just a fragment of, right, of this product that I show right here. What you see with the RSV is this is the conversion to the GPPPG, the smaller amount of conversion, so this would be just the background. And then this would be a, this is an enzyme that, that um, called vaccinia that has uh, strong capping activity and we use this as, a, as an additional control within the reaction. This is showing a time plot of RSV polymerase over time and its capping activity in the formation of this GPPPG species. What you see here is that when we looked at the delta loop um, in this reaction, it shows a significant reduction in the capping conversion compared to the wild type RSV, indicating that yes, it projects, that, that priming loop projects into the RDRP domain, but it's coming from the capping domain, so it has a very strong role both in RDRP activity and the capping. What this does is it leaves a lot of more, more, more questions for us to, to probe in the lab, and specifically if we're looking at the right residues for this reaction. So I've highlighted here the, what we've proposed to be the priming loop. But it, the priming loop, because, because we don't have an exact cryo-EM model of our polymerase, it's, it's somewhat nebulous what exactly, how far that priming loop extends. So more work is, is uh, necessary to really understand its, its real role. Um, but it's definitely linked to the initiation of RNA polymerization, and it has a distinct role in capping because of the significant uh, reduction we saw in the enzymatic activity. Um, we made this new prote protein, which had never been made before, and it's important that it was able to be recovered and purified within the lab. Um, it's possible that it could have disrupted the entire protein structure. And our data shows that deleting the priming loop impairs the ability to produce longer extension products in RDRP assays. And in capping act activity, we saw a significant reduction. The mechanism that I pointed out on this slide right here is what's been associated with VSV, um, which has a well-characterized capping system. What's important in future studies is to understand, is our mechanism the same as VSV, or do we have an alternative capping mechanism going on? Um, and I think what's important, because I work for some pharmaceutical company, is, is how does this provide new insights into the design of new capping inhibitors? Because that would inevitably inhibit the enzyme. And so I think that, that this data really provides many new opportunities for that. With that, I would like to acknowledge my employer who funded the entirety of this research, uh, Janssen Research and Development. Uh, we work as part of a significant team within our biochemistry group and then also the chemistry and biology groups within our company. Um, Jerome Duvall is our group leader. Amy Fung did a lot of the work on this project and I would like to acknowledge her help with that as well as everybody else in our team, our management team, um, Larry, Leo, and Julian, as well as our collaborator, uh, Rachel Ferns at Boston University School of Medicine. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions and I appreciate your time. Any questions? Um, I actually have one to start with. Have you have you tried or considered making point mutations instead of deletions in that priming loop to avoid the question whether you change the complete structure of the enzyme? We have, yeah. So at the tip of this, uh, the loop is a, a set of aromatic residues, and so we just were able to make those those constructs recently. It takes about six weeks to generate this protein and to purify it, so it's it's a very slow process. But we'd like to understand what exact residues are responsible for capping. Okay. Another question? I wonder, is it known if you take VSV polymerase and uh, you inhibit the capping activity, do you also see then only uh, initiation and maybe nucleotide synthesis of the first three or four nucleotides? Mm, I don't know. I know that the VSV capping activity has been inhibited before, um, but I don't know if it's been done in the context of the polymerase activity as well the RNA synthesis.